let's take a look at Moche and its use of shamanism. The author of our book has given us, a, I think it's a full page of images, figure 103 in our book, that include four separate depictions, Moche ceramics, and each of those can be linked to shamanism. The bottom left, which depicts an owl, we're going to be talking about the owl as a creature associated very intimately with the shaman in just a moment. At the top left, we have a peanut person who's playing a flute, and it's really the flute that links him to shamanism, to music and to performance and to transformation through perhaps music that assists in shamanic rites. The one at the bottom on the right side is an individual we do believe is a shaman. Let's just take a close-up of this person. Okay. Because the person displays symptoms of having had an illness, and I do believe it was a parasitic illness. Generally, if you got this illness, you would die, but the people who survived it were considered to be special and perhaps to have supernatural qualities. They also would have been marked by that illness. And shamans, in fact, are often considered to be unusual, to be outsiders, and by the nature of being unusual, might have a head start in terms of their abilities to contact the realm of the spirits. Returning to figure 103, which is the top right, uh, this is an image that is a goblet. And uh, when first this goblet was investigated, it was thought that it might have been used in the sacrifice ceremony. So it was tested to see if it had any residue inside that indicated it had been used for human blood. The test came back negative. So right now what we're assuming, and I think this works much better with the imagery itself, we're assuming that this goblet would have been ritually used, but used to convey the substances of hallucinogens for consumption by a shaman. It also has rattles in the handle, and that would be in the upper portion of this vessel around the headdress, like so and so, so that you could actually shake this thing and it would create a rhythm. And rhythmic sounds do indeed help the shaman to travel, to alter the nature of his consciousness, and therefore to leave this realm and enter another one. This is a fanged being, and he has a headdress that is associated with felines. It has been identified as an ocelot, a cool. It is a feline in general, and we can associate felines, powerful animals who move very quickly, uh, with shamanism in general, and in particular with the idea that the shaman transforms into a cat. In addition to that, our vessel also has a painted surface that depicts a bird. This is the wing part, this is the beak part, and I've got more birdie wing on the other side. So literally it covers the face of the shaman and suggests the flight of the shaman, the transformation, and the ability of the shaman to move, and to move quickly to another realm of existence with the aid, we think, of hallucinogens. This is particularly important also as a vessel because it's Chavin revival. By that I mean it is done in Chavin style, in particular with the crossed fangs that are part of the mouth of this individual. Why would Moche do this? Well, we think that they're consciously referring back to Chavin as a high civilization. They're kind of crafting their own history and associating themselves with the past, a little bit like we do in Washington, D.C. with the designs of our buildings, which look suspiciously like Greek temples. So the Moche are drawing a parallel between their own culture and the pan Peruvian religion and a cult that was associated with Chavin. There are also female shamans. This is an image that I have briefly shown us before. It does appear in our book, figure 104, and this is a shamaness. It is a shaman, a female shaman, 
who has already transformed. She is part human and part owl. The textbook makes it clear that in some ways females had an added opportunity to embrace shamanism because it was a profession, an occupation that was not determined by a male-dominated society, an otherwise male-dominated warrior society. It was instead of I'm going to call it a calling. You would be brought to shamanism by experiencing dreams or visions, perhaps unusual forms of behavior, and certainly also by illnesses, uh, perhaps also by deformities, things that would mark you as special and would suggest an ability to move outside of this realm and be able to communicate with another realm. So this was equally open to males and to females. And in this case, we do have a female shaman. We can tell this in part by the shawl that is draped over the head and the shoulders of the shaman. So that's an indicator right there. In addition to that, we can see that the shaman has an owl face. Owls are particularly important as supernaturals, and they show up in a number of ceramic wares created by Moche artists. They are figures that are anomalous. Uh, they don't quite fit normal patterns. In particular, they have extraordinary vision, and they are great hunters, but they do this in the dark. So they're actually figures that can fly very quickly, but they do it after the sun sets. They are also considered great and skilled hunters, and as such, they have the ability to take prey. In a sense, our shaman or shamaness is also a hunter, in this case, seeking answers. We do believe in this particular ceramic example to cure her patient. The patient is located right over here. We can see actually a view from above. That patient, we're not quite sure how this is working, but it, we do believe it's a patient who needs to be cured. And we think the patient is wearing a mask of a fanged fi figure, in other words, of a supernatural, a divine being, that might be being called upon in the process of curing. We also have a typical display of what I usually refer to as materials that belong in a shaman's kit, all of the objects that could be used and called upon by the shaman to assist in the curing process itself. That would include lime that would be used for purification. And I do think we've got a box of it back here. And I think these are lime cones actually being used out front. In addition to that, there's a bull roarer. That's a noisemaker because we want to activate the spirit world. We want to call them. We, want, we need some help. And so we're going to call to them. And I think that's what this is right here. We in addition, see that the shaman is indeed ingesting hallucinogenic substances uh, right here in the shaman's hand. She is holding a slice of San Pedro cactus, uh, which is a potent uh, mind-altering substance. In addition to that, there are a string. There are actually four strings down here of espincho seeds. These come from the Amazon and everything from the Amazon. He has these spiritual, mystical, and powerful associations uh, dealing with spirituality and with transformation. These seeds also were hallucinogens, though, in addition. Underneath this, there is an animal and it is tied to a tree, so it's a captive. My assumption is that the animal is going to be sacrificed as part of the curing ritual. If you go to Peru today and you need to see a shaman for purposes of curing, as part of that ceremony, it is possible that a kui or a guinea pig will be sacrificed. The disease that you have being transferred to the kui in the curing ceremony, the kui then cut up. The shaman examines the entrails to determine on the inside of the dead kui what diseased part of the body needs to be taken care of. So we are assuming by what we know about shamanism today that that indeed might be the way it worked in the past as well. A rather extraordinary piece, what it does help us to know is that in the world of the moche, 
female figures did indeed I have the capacity to find positions of importance okay shamans and um, midwives in fact often might have been the same people uh, sometimes today they are so we assume that this might also have been true in the period of moche and I have some examples that might help to illustrate that including top right figure 95 which is a cure from uh, the burial uh, that we're going to be talking about shortly uh, for the Lady of uh, Kao. Um, in all of these images, we do indeed think that we are dealing with a curer, with a healer, and at the same time, probably with a shaman. Uh, the images that are at the bottom are rather extraordinary. Uh, the subject of a woman giving birth is unusual. The moche, however, do convey this in their ceramic depictions. The idea of a shaman and a midwife being the same person almost certainly does relate to the idea that both of them go through transitions. Uh, the shaman is someone who travels. She engages in spirit travel and by doing that it is a transition from one place to another. Birthing, the birthing process is also a transition essentially bringing forth new life into this world. Both of these also are dangerous. Both of them might cause you to perhaps lose your life, but both of them definitely also cross boundaries. In the terms of birthing, you are bringing a new life to our world, to the middle world, to the world where we exist today. The textbook makes the comment that the subject of giving birth is relatively unique to Moche, and, and it is. Uh, the explanation that she gives, and she may be correct, is that uh, it's because Moche art is driven by storytelling. It is filled with narrative. And when you look at Moche pieces, this is one reason that they tend to be popular pieces with Western audiences today. Uh, we can relate to the images that we see. We, th we also think we understand the images that we see. But almost certainly, there is generally some degree of symbolism that perhaps we need to interpret to become fully aware of the meaning. Uh, the one on our left is figure 106 in our textbook. And the author of her book does make the point that the woman is kind of pressing. You know, she's putting an effort into giving birth. And the stirrup spout, we've, we've lost our spout. Now, this is the handle portion of it, has actually, it appears to have been consciously, purposely uh, twisted to the side so that we get a continuous line running through the woman giving birth directly to where the child emerges and there's a little bitty head coming out down to the shaman midwife who is helping in the delivery. I have another example, lower right, or yeah, lower right, um, this is a Getty image and it again helps us to see the woman is being held in position by another woman. I'm going to say the shamans or the midwife's helper. Well, the midwife and I'd like you to see that the midwife is wearing one of those uh, shawls that we do associate with shamans as the midwife shaman helps to get the baby to come forth. It is again a kind of quest to deliver and to heal. Top right we do see again an image of a shaman and in this case it comes from a burial of an important woman. We're going to see this again and we suspect in fact that the important woman might have been a shaman. This is the shaman and she's wearing a shawl that has spots and that should suggest to you jaguar spots and the idea of transformation. She is assisting with a sick child probably being held by its mommy and she has placed her hand on the abdomen of that sick child in an effort to engage in cure. This is a last look at a detail of that image which again underscores the important role that females could take in Moche society. We're going to see that again in a minute in a rather impressive burial. The Lady of Cow.